to thrive during these turbulent times? Our first guest says yes and is here to share her insights with us. We're happy to have with us psychologist, executive coach, and seminar leader, Belinda Gore. Belinda, welcome. Thanks, Glad to Kathy. have you here. Glad to be here. Why do you think it's possible for people to actually thrive when things are so challenging? Well, we always have challenges in our lives, and it's really all about resilience. How do we learn how to adapt? Uh, how do we use changes to our advantage so that they're opportunities rather than something that is a heavy weight to carry around or um, something that we tell ourselves is going to be the end of the world. And so what we tell ourselves, it seems like that's really critical. Absolutely. The technical term for that is the narrative, and mm -hmm. it's really what we're saying to ourselves, the narrative in our heads, in our minds, as well as what we say out loud about what's going on. So if, for example, if I'm in a situation where I'm facing some challenge or or um, particular challenge with economic times, with job, with family, I can make it worse by creating a narrative that spins me off into a different direction or and then is the reverse also true can I make it better by what I say absolutely true there was great research actually it was 30 years ago um, when AT&T was going through its big changes and um, um, an eight-year study followed executives who'd lost their jobs or were being significantly uh, moved around and it was identified that there was a small group of people who actually thrived during this time of turbulence. And so there, we know that there are four factors that contribute mm. to people being able to be resilient and thrive. And that's what we have to focus on. And it's a lot about what we tell ourselves. And what are those four factors? Well, the first one is that we have an attitude that says that challenge is a positive thing. Oh. Another is that we have a belief system and we're committed to that belief system that says that our experiences have meaning. We have we, a belief or an attitude that we have control of ourselves, maybe not the world, mm -hmm. but we have control over ourselves and how we respond to things. And then the fourth factor is our connectedness or our closeness with other people so that we have a support system to right. rely on. Um, I, it, what you said reminds me, well, first of all, the thing that comes to my mind is a wonderful book that I love by Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning. Yes. And he really talks about his experiences in the concentration camps during World War II. I think he was in four different camps over three years. Mm -hmm. And he came out basically saying that uh, we don't have to be the plaything of circumstance. There's always this sort of inner self that can choose a response mm -hmm. and you talked about that yes. what I call the power of choice but basically mm -hmm. seeing that I have some control if I don't have any control at all over my external circumstance mm -hmm. I at least have some control over the way I look at that the frame the view and that's I think exactly that, right that how we frame things is how we give meaning to our experience and it's our beliefs that cause us to find a certain meaning and those beliefs are really um, based on experiences that we've had in our lives that we bring to a certain situation. What's really one of the most difficult things is to become really conscious of what those beliefs are. Mm -hmm. If one of my beliefs is that I'm too old to change then it's going to be really hard for me to make the changes that I need to if I lose my job for instance. Um, if I believe that bad things shouldn't happen to me if I've been a good person, mm -hmm. then I'm going to fight or resist experiences that seem to contradict that belief. It's interesting that you talk about that resistance to sort of what is. I like to describe that as mm -hmm. being, um, you know, there, certainly things happen to people, bad things mm -hmm. happen to good people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the resistance piece to me, always seems to accentuate the stress around it. Right. Just the fact that you have the resistance to what's out there, to what's happening, creates more stress. Mm -hmm. and, and if you can yes. move to the point of, I, I like to say acceptance versus resignation. There are two different yes. things. Right. Acceptance of what is. It doesn't mean you're saying, this is fine, that this bad thing's happened to me, but just, I see that it's the reality that I'm faced mm -hmm. with, and then what do I, what do, I do with mm -hmm. that? 